West Bromwich Manor House dates back to the 13th century. Its history is said to involve murder, grave robbing and insanity. It's believed to be haunted by three spirits, included a bearded man and two young girls, who were thought to live on the kitchen stairs. <coughs> For many years the building was used as a pub, but is now managed by Sandwell Council, which is in the process of turning it into a visitor attraction. During its years as a pub, tales have cropped up about poltergeists hurling glasses behind the bar, and apparitions galore which include the ghost of a cat. A paranormal investigator said that he had held numerous events at the manor between 2005 and 2008. He says his team witnessed balls of fire floating across the room at the house, heavy footsteps belonging to no one, a full apparition of a monk, exploding light bulbs and slamming doors. All these things happened to members of staff, not only during the event, but while setting up the, st the start of the event and clearing it away at the end, once the guests have gone home, uh, which in, in our experience is very unusual. He says people started experiencing strange phenomena from the moment it opened as a pub in 1961. For example, several landlords and ladies got so used to hearing their name called that when they were alone in the building, it no longer bothered them. The doors are opening and closing all by themselves, and objects being moved by unseen hands became everyday occurrences for the building's inhabitants. The Oak House West Bromwich is a 16th century building. It's said to be the home of at least three spirits, and this stunning timber frame building was once home of the Turton family who were very wealthy farmers. In 1837, the house was said to change hands and became home of the Wiley family. A paranormal activity at this location can be rife. Many ghostly sightings and full-blooded apparitions are witnessed here at the house. Heavy footsteps have been heard coming from empty rooms. Numerous reports have been made that people see a tall man standing dressed in period clothing and has a beard just watching. There have been children heard running around the house. During ghost hunts at the home guests have witnessed icy cold spots and the sound of door handles turning by unseen hands. <laughs> Sandwell Priory in West Bromwich was built in the 12th century, but now only ruins of the site remain, situated in Sandwell Valley Country Park. Near the M5, the land surrounding the ruins are said to be haunted by monks. A motorist driving along the road near the ruins, when they saw a monk-like figure walking along it before banishing, the person concerned was not alone, but happened to be in the car with three other family members, with everyone sharing the encounter. There are also claims that monk figures have been seen on the M5, which cuts through the Sandwell Valley Country Park, causing motorists to swerve. In, in fact, you can see it between um, where the M6 and the M5 split and Junction 1 of the M5. The story of the valley's haunted pool have endured for many years, and although Wasson Pool is still there, it's been landscaped, but the water remains. A one ghost in the park has been affectionately called Beryl, and <laughs> speaking of, of the M5 Junction 1, it's a motorway island on the Birmingham Road, West Bromwich, and it's an odd place to be haunted, but nevertheless there's reports of apparitions seen here. Uh, the remains of an old building can be seen in the centre of the island, and, and this is part of the old lodge to Sandwell Hall, uh, which has long since been demolished. A hooded figure has been seen by both drivers and passengers in this area. Uh, the figure typically crosses the road before disappearing. Uh, given that the figure is hooded, it's possibly the apparition is associated with Sandwell Priory, which of course is situated nearby. Uh, the other figure seen around the island is a lady dressed in white. 
as she's been seen in the early hours and the morning and is often mistaken for a hitchhiker. Her witnesses quickly realise that she's no ordinary hitchhiker. That when they find that she's disappeared, when they stop to offer a lift. The Victorian Courts of Justice in West Bromwich were built purely to punish and to, to condemn. condemn. Modernisation uh, by the Victorians in 1890 Courts were added, and in particular the foreboding central court, with its sombre panelling and dark environment. The punishments were no less harsh, but at least you were tried before being judged for your crimes. The courtroom and jail have housed some of the most dangerous prisoners in society during its lifetime, and while some of them escaped with a prison sentence, many would have met their death on the gallows. People have worked here, says there's a deep sense of panic, an overwhelming feeling of wanting to escape. Perhaps they're picking up on the emotions of former prisoners or the savage treatment of prisoners from former guards of past centuries. West Bromwich bus station and different bus routes. A shout has been heard coming from the back of the bus when the rear seats are empty. A Victorian house on the high street, the sound of a woman repeatedly calling out the name Duncan and a tiller voice rose to screams haunted this property for a three-month period. The sound of someone walking around the house could also be heard once everyone had gone to bed. The, late, the family later found out that a murder had occurred on the site a few years prior to the moving in. The White Art Inn, a hand of glory discovered within the attic, was removed from the property for 100 years after the building was haunted by ghostly footsteps. The Leopard, the Leopard in Moor Street is believed to be haunted by its first light and sea, Peter Pearson. In Black Lane, the Talbot, another ex landlord is said to haunt the pub. He's known to throw mobile phones around the pub having recognised their black screen to be scrying mirrors and their electronic circuitry sigils. Ebenezer, a former customer of the Britannia in Dial Learn Lane, turns lights on and off and knocks glasses off the shelf. He's been seen in the gents' toilets in a tailcoat in Trilby, although I have to say encountering strange men in long coats in pubs in West Brom is not unusual. Uh, the old hot pole in Carter's Green, West Bromwich, is home to a little boy and girl, girl ghost in Victorian costumes. And also an older man has been seen in the snug who could be ex-landlord Alfred Kendricks, whilst the cellar is also reputedly haunted. <laughs> Wensbury is an ancient place that was believed to be important to Anglo-Saxon people and also perhaps Vikings. The name Woden clearly has significance in the name Wensbury. A Viking helmet without the horns erroneously associated with such warriors has been spotted near St Bartholomew's Church on the hill. And whilst I'm not really complaining, I was inappropriately touched by a vicar uh, that I thought was of St Paul. Bartholomew's Church as a teenager, but on, on investigation it was not the vicar of St Bartholomew's, uh, but another church in Wensbury. Furthermore, I doubt if the Vikings was to blame as much as my own naivety. Around Wensbury, Gabriel Hounds, demonic dogs that could fly, would often be seen and heard in the region. Some witnesses thought these were geese. Uh, the Gormont Cinema on Walsall Street was built on the site of the Picture House in 1938. Uh, the Gormont ran for many years, changing its name to the Odeon in 64, and briefly to the Silver in the early 70s. Uh, the cinema closed in 1974, but the building remained in use as Walker's Bingo, Bingo Hall until 2010, when it was being converted into a Bingo Hall. The workmen were said to have witnessed toilet rolls being hurled 
round. The caretaker was so disturbed by what was going on, he refused to stay in the building. At Wensbury Labour Club on Churchill, one night after closing up for, uh, for the night, a little girl with blonde hair ran across the bar room. She just vanished. There were times when you could hear things being dragged across the floor and a woman crying. All very spooky. Many years ago it was owned by nuns. It's now a children's nursery. nursery. Uh, the anchor was a former pub, and there was an incident of horse stabbing. <laughs> a dumb waiter was said to move by itself, and the doors locked of their own accord. The haunting at the horse and jockey in Wensbury is related to a suicide at the pub. The story goes that a man walked in, ordered a double brandy, and then shot himself. Nicknamed Cyril, he makes his presence felt in a number of ways. A loud bangs are heard and cold spots felt in the bar area and lights get turned on and off. A man in a long overcoat has been seen in the area of toilets. Amazing how often many long toilets walk into to into many long overcoats walk into toilets in pubs in Sandwell when there should have been no one there and also steps at the back of the pub leading to the car park. Uh, this apparition could be Cyril himself, or another ghost haunting the horse and jockey. Legend says ye old leather bottle in Wensbury once housed notorious hymen Dick Turpin. It was built in uh, 1510 and was formerly a coach house, uh, but an old photograph on its walls shows that ye old lantern was a pub as far back as, 17, as 1887. Where, where men in Victorian attire were pictured outside. Landlord Carl admits he's sceptical of some peculiar tales. I've heard things, especially in the cellar. I've heard tapping and some barrels tick. Personally, I haven't seen anything. But we had a regular psychic night. Just before the health crisis, one of the mediums sent me a picture. Said there was a little girl standing at the door. But I'm very sceptical, I try not to believe it because I've come here on my own. Quite often you can smell toast and paint, I'm not sure why. The toast can be any time of the day, whereas the paint is when you come in in the morning. We had a workman, I left him to carry on with what he was doing and he said the chair in here moved on its own. <laughs> The former public library is one of the oldest buildings in Aldbury and stands opposite the modern offices of Sandwell Council. Now a Grade 2 listed building, it was erected in 1816 as a court of requests. The premises included a jail with cells for male and female prisoners. In July 1820 an order was issued that no kinds of provisions, ale, spirits or drinkables be allowed to be received or taken by prisoners prisoners for their uh, of any description whatsoever except a loaf of bread weighing one pound for each person per day notwithstanding this order it's now it's now a Weatherspoons. Aubrey Bluebell pub a figure complete with an old beaten up hat has been seen walking through the wall in the bar area the cottage in Aubrey is said to be haunted by a former landlord who is short and stocky and wears tweeds. The fountain in Tipton is associated with William Perry, the Tipton Slasher. Not what you think, a British heavyweight prize fighter of the 19th century. Mad Rourke's pie factory on Hurst Lane, Tipton, is believed to be haunted by three ghosts. Nobby, a former landlord who hung himself in the cellar, where he is seen wearing a long black coat and pulling at men's clothing in the toilets. Now, I did warn you about pubs in the area. A little girl had been heard singing and laughing in the cellar. There's also meant to be a cavalier, even though it's unlikely there was a pub on this site during the Civil War. Sam Cole on City Road, Tividale, is where the Barley Mow used to stand. Shadowy figures could be seen flitting through the pub and the ghost of one of the regulars was a frequent visitor. 
Sam Cole was a coachman who would leave his horse and cart outside in the road, a while he enjoined a pint or two. The sound of Sam Cole's horse and cart has often been heard in the road outside, where the pub once stood. At the chapel house in Tividale, the yellow wet floor sign seems to move mysteriously and fold itself neatly on the floor, while the mop in the corner of the room is propelled across a nearby table. Smethwick's Black Patch Park is an area near the canal in an area near the canal, a female entity vanished in front of one, one witness who walked through the park pushing a pram. The apparition was wearing a long black dress and red cape. Uh, the witness also claimed that she had beautiful long black hair for her age. Uh, the exact site of the appearance was on a pathway a few yards from a narrow bridge. The old woman is thought to be the thud of Queen Henty, a gypsy who was from a Roman encampment that stayed in the park earlier this century. While St Philip's Church in Smethwick, two young boys playing at the church grounds were close to a statue of St Philip's. They watched the left hand suddenly break off and fall to the ground, leaving a black void in place of the hands. The boys looked away for a few minutes and when they looked back, the left hand was black back in place. Smethwick's Thimble Mill Baths are popular with ghost hunting teams. This building is reputedly home to several paranormal entities, including a horse, a figure in green boiler suit, and a female named Emily. Several accounts of paranormal activity have been reported here, including wet, footprint, uh, wet footprints fresh on the floor when bathers had long gone home, Many apparitions seen in the underground tunnels and bright lights strangely being set off in the changing rooms. The toilets themselves are said to be very haunted, with the ghost of the woman seen on many occasions. Well, it makes a change from a man in a long overcoat, doesn't it? The tunnels themselves are thought to be haunted by many spirits, including that of children. In fact, one of the overnight ghost hunts here was clearly heard the sound of a child shouting mummy. Uh, during World War II, the maze of underground tunnels and cellars were used as air raid shelters, with posters and drawings made by those awaiting the old clear sirens still adorning the walls. A ghost horse with haunting cries echoed through the dark cellar. The air turned cold. A Smethwick's Worley Abbey is no longer standing and the area is now a public park. The area where the abbey once stood is still haunted by a lady in grey. It's rumoured that she committed suicide after a love affair. 